Good morning, everybody. For those who don't know me, I'm Mal. I'm part of the team. And uh, uh, who's had a great week this week? A few. Who has not had a great week this week? Yeah, we'll, we'll pray for you. So this morning we're going to continue in our series of spiritual disciplines. And what I want to look at this morning is the spiritual discipline of tuning into God. Now, who's been in a conversation or maybe listening to something, maybe a TV show or maybe, dare I say, a sermon and you've tuned out and dropped off to sleep? You don't have to put your hand up, but feel free to do so if you wish. (laughs) So what about in a conversation with your spouse? I'm sure Larissa has been talking at times and Damien has been watching the TV and... Yeah, what did you say, dear? Um, I, I don't know what would happen, but I would suggest Damien would be in trouble. So sometimes we get in a situation where something's going on around us and we tune out. And maybe we have to say oh, about a TV show, what did they just say? Or maybe this morning I'll be preaching away and somebody will say to somebody else, what did he just say? Because we tune out. We all do it. That's just a little scenario. Who's been to a gym and worked on strengthening muscles? Who are our sports people around here? Somebody say what? <laughs> Was some, did somebody just tune out? <laughs> Very good. I know who it was. I'll speak to them afterwards. So who's been to a gym before? When I was a young fella, um, it, um, I don't know how old I was, probably finished about 22, 23, I was a weightlifter. So every night after work, go home, get changed, go down to the gym and throw a few pieces of heavy iron around for a while and uh, built up some muscles. But I had to be disciplined to do it. So how do we get stronger muscles? We need to be disciplined. We need to deliberately and consciously decide to train. Now, there's a a few... Uh, PE, a couple of PE teachers and a few coaches around here. Do your charges do as they're told? Damien, you're a coach. Was. Was. Just Does that, uh, good. Okay, so they didn't listen. So they tuned out on you. It's very easy to do. If we don't commit, we don't get the benefit. What about musicians? We've got a few of them here too. What do you have to do to be good? Practice Practice and practice. And do you have to deliberately decide to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Guitars don't play themselves, do they? No. (laughs) So we have to deliberately decide to do that. So that involves things like correct techniques, repetitions, listening to the coach, listening to the instructor and things like that. So who knows that just like in the physical... We need to work on our spiritual strength. We need to exercise spiritual disciplines. And tuning into God is a bit like a muscle that we need to flex to get stronger. Also like physical training, we need to consciously and deliberately decide to tune into God. Nearly every moment of every day, dozens, in fact hundreds of different demands compete for our attention. Who's well aware of that? We're surrounded by noise. The phone rings and it grabs our attention. Somebody calls out to us and that grabs our attention. The saucepan on the stove boils over and it grabs our attention. We're driving down the road and we see something on the road and it grabs our attention. Hopefully we manage to regain our attention quickly so that we don't crash into something. But there is always something wanting to grab our attention. The list is endless. And there's always a distraction around every corner that wants to take us away from what we're doing. The boss might yell out, hey, drop what you're doing and do this now. Anyone ever had that? Something urgent comes along, you've got to drop what you're doing. But then you've got to remember where it was so you can pick it up again later. 
Social media screams out, look over here. The people we love clamour for our time. With all these voices, it can be hard to hear the leading of God. Tuning into God is like when we find a signal on a radio. Who's ever been frustrated trying to find a signal on a radio? You go camping or you go away somewhere and you're trying radio stations. The radio's not working. You've got to fiddle with it until you can find a station that you can hear. Sometimes all you pick up is static, just white noise, not worth listening to. And that's all we get. But tuning into God is when we find a strong station and we can hear it. It's a muscle we have to flex in order to make it stronger. We need to deliberately and consciously turn down the volume on all the noise that's going on around us and all the other voices so that we can turn up the volume of God's voice. So listening practices are spiritual because they cultivate a different kind of hearing. In 1 Corinthians 2, it tells us that God can't be seen with normal eyes or heard with normal ears. Just get the technology going. That vibrator, is it supposed to do that? So, God can only be revealed through the Spirit. Now, we're not alone in all this. Even Jesus was distracted. Remember when he went out in the wilderness for 40 days? What did the devil do? The devil got into his ear and tried to tempt him. The devil tried to distract him from what he was there for. The devil tried to take over and hijack what Jesus was trying to do. Three times he did that. But each time Jesus told him that he wasn't interested. Three times Jesus told the devil to go take a run and jump. He consciously and deliberately chose to exercise the spiritual discipline of tuning into his father. So we can practice tuning into God and tuning into the Holy Spirit no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, including when we're at work. Anyone ever heard of a guy by the name of Brother Lawrence? Brother Lawrence was a 17th century monk. Brother Lawrence learnt to connect with God through his day-to-day work. As he worked in the monastery kitchen, Brother Lawrence trained himself to view his work as something he was doing with God. God was there working with him. While he washed dishes, he thought about how much he loved God and how much God loved him. And this turned his work into an act of prayer, something that he and God were doing together. What a novel idea. What a fantastic thing to do. Anyone ever thought of including God in everything you do? God is at work at all the time. And I often find myself looking at something or watching something happen and thinking that there's a message in that. Now, most of you know that we have a a pet lorikeet and his name is Squirt because that's what lorikeets do. And Squirt likes to be out of the cage and he likes to be with Monica and I. And even while I was preparing this message, he came into my study. He, he basically jumped off of Monica and flew over to where I was in my study and he perched on me. And he actually perched himself on my wrist while I was typing. He was watching everything I was doing. Now, I don't know whether anyone's had pet lorikeets, especially tame ones, but have you ever wondered what a cross between a kitten and a puppy would be like? That's what a lorikeet is. I'm sure God had a sense of humour when he created lorikeets. They're into everything. They have to know what's going on everywhere. If we open the fridge, he turns up. He knows that there's good things to eat in the fridge. He even tries to get in the fridge. So sometimes we have to grab him and take him out of the fridge before we shut the door. But he's into everything. You can't do it. He supervises us. So he thinks he owns the place. What's the lesson in that? Do we want to be near God? Do we want to be with God 
be a part of what he does, watching what he does and taking it all in. That's what our lorikeet does with us. Should we be doing the same thing with God? Should we be watching what he does and taking it all in? Should we be tuning in to God to find out what he's doing? I've found great inspiration being prompted by the Holy Spirit when I look at God's creation and I see what God's doing. Sometimes I do that without realising it. Now that doesn't make me anything special. But what it does mean is that I like to know what's going on. I like to know what God is doing. I like to be able to see his hand at work. And I love seeing that. And I like to learn from that. So a focused and committed mind is a powerful tool that we can acquire and we can get, achieve great things with that, especially in God. The state of mind is a major contributor to outcomes and outlooks that people may have in their life. Mental therapists and psychologists understand the need for somebody to have a healthy state of mind in order to live in the best way possible. As I reflect on the mind, it also points me in the direction of how our minds affect our spirituality and being. In Proverbs 23.7, let's see if we get the technology to work. Oh, look at that. In Proverbs 23.27, it states, as a man or a woman thinks, so is he or she. This means that what the mind thinks is what's put into it. The mind doesn't decide things on their own. Remember when computers first came out, we used to say garbage in, garbage out? Is that true of our mind as well? Garbage in, garbage out? We can only put, fr- put out of our mind, put from our mind, what we put into it, what we allow to enter into it. The mind cannot produce any thoughts of its own. It has to be fed. In Romans 12, 2, it tells us, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. That's the NIV. Eugene Peterson puts it like this in the message. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit in without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognise what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Eugene Peterson doesn't mince words. He tells it like it is. Paul says that we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. In other words, we need to replace some of the things that are competing for our time. We need to replace some of the things that we would naturally focus on and replace them with the things of God. It was important for Paul to point this out as the old and corrupt mindset of people had to be refilled with godly things that they may be able to live in God's righteousness and holiness. Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, so if you're serious about, also this is from Eugene Peterson as well, so if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right, sorry, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what's going on around Christ. That is where the action is. See things from his perspective. How often do we look at things from God's perspective? 
He has a, a bigger picture than we would ever have. Having a discussion with some friends not long ago on a topic, and I said, well, it depends on what your perspective of that is because you're only looking at it through your own eyes. What if you look at it through God's eyes? Would you see something different? Would you try to be able to understand what God can see? Because he sees a better way. To be able to continually live in abundance in God's will and for God's glory, our minds must always be tuned into God. Proverbs 4.23 in the NIV says, Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So that poses a question. That little short scripture is full of a question. What is all else? What is everything else? We got it, it says above all else. What is it that we need to be above? A mind that is tuned to God is able to perceive what God says when he or she... Sorry, what's that? Sorry, I've missed my words. A mind that is tuned into God is able to perceive what God says when somebody prays and goes on to obey God. Now, some of the ways that might be useful, and I don't want to go into too much detail here. We don't have time this morning. There's a lot of ways that we can tune into God. Here's five quick and simple ones. Anyone ever heard of a preacher by the name of Benny Hinn? He's retired now. But one of the things he said, I remember hearing him one, say, one time say, he said, say good morning to the Holy Spirit every morning once you wake up. This helps you acknowledge God's presence with you and allows you to open your spirit to experience God in your life. Who's ever thought of saying good morning to the Holy Spirit? Perhaps we take that for granted. We say good morning to our, our spouse. We say good morning to our kids. We say good morning to our friends. We all said good morning this morning. Did we say good morning to the Holy Spirit? Just a thought. Number two, pray always. Pray about everything and for everything. Let praying be a lifestyle. The more you pray, the more you build your faith in God because you trust God with everything. A praying person is one who is absolutely dependent on God. So if we pray about something, it means that we're bringing it to God's attention. Now, not that he doesn't already know about it, but he still wants us to bring it to him. Number three, meditate on scripture. Speak to the Holy Spirit about scripture. Research and learn more to understand the scripture. Encourage yourself with scripture. Let it inspire you, teach you and equip you. Where's a good place to find out what the word of God says? The word of God. If you want to know something about something, read the manual. So what's the word of God? It's a manual for life. Number four, commit your heart and mind to obey God's commands. Love God and love others. For every time you demonstrate love for others, it is easy to think about God. What's part of the motto of this church? Who can recite it? It's on the wall out there. Sorry? Love one another. We are a church. Oh, I've got to get it right myself. Linda? Linda what's it? Can you recite that? <laughs> it's okay, folks. Just Damien just threw Linda under the bus. Yeah, we are a church. We're loving God, loving our community, and loving each other counts for everything. Yeah, we got there. <laughs> oh. 
Anyway, that's right. Linda can deal with you later. <laughs> okay, and the fifth one is talk about God with others. You cannot talk about, about God without thinking about God. Now, when we get people together, often we talk about our kids. We talk about different achievements that they've done, how proud we are of them. Um, we talk about various things that have happened in our lives. Do we talk about God? If we can talk about family members, isn't God a family member? Can't we talk about God and how proud of him we are? How, how proud of us he is? Very interesting. It's impossible to talk about God without thinking about him. That's, that's all I'll go through with them today, but there's lots of different ways of tuning into God. As we commit more to the spiritual discipline of tuning into God, our minds will be filled with the things of God. We will be so filled, so much out of the overflow that we'll just have to tell people about God. We share his love. We share his grace. We share his miracles, his goodness and all that God is to others and that that might lead them to come to know God as well. Philippians 4.8 Wrong way. Where are we going? Philippians 4 8. Here we go. Philippians 4 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Proverbs 4 23 to 27. Keep vigilant. Watch over your heart, for that's where life starts. Don't talk about both sides. Don't talk out of both sides of your mouth. Avoid careless banter, white lies, and gossip. Keep your eyes straight ahead. Ignore all sideshow distractions. Watch your step, and the road will stretch out smooth before you. Look neither right nor left. Leave evil in the, in the dust. James 4, 7 to 8. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. It's very clear there that God is saying... Don't fiddle about with the things that don't matter. Don't waste time with those things. Spend time tuning into him. Perhaps if the musicians can come back. We read in the Gospels a fair bit about the comparison of, of God being, or Jesus, being the good shepherd. We read about us being the sheep. So we are God's sheep and God is our shepherd. We rely on the shepherd to lead, guard and provide for us. Without the shepherd we'll go astray. Now I went looking everywhere I could think of for a picture that Ben showed us after an overseas trip where him and Julie were trekking through somewhere, Spain or somewhere, and a man came walking towards them and behind him was a procession of sheep. He was a shepherd leading his sheep, just like they used to do in the old days. Jesus is leading us. Jesus is walking in front of us. The Bible says that he is the good shepherd. Sheep whose eyes and ears are set on the shepherd never miss out on the shepherd. The sheep hear the voice of the shepherd and follow after him or her. In green pastures, there is an abundance. We, we enjoy the provision of the shepherd. Let's not forget to keep our hearts and minds 
attentive on God, tuned into God. For there's a journey ahead for us to continue. At the still waters where our souls are being restored, let us continue to keep our minds on our good shepherd who leads us. In the busyness of life, the demands, the chaos, the struggles, the temptations, disasters, hardships, all the confrontations we have to face. And anything else we might face in life can take our attention away from God. But remember to tune right back into Him when you've realised that you've tuned out. So just as if Damien tuned out of a conversation when Larissa's talking, he needs to get back in tune pretty quick. Or else. But with us, God's more gracious than that. If we tune out, He's waiting for us to come back. Some of you heard me share before, many years ago, remember the paper tickets you used to get for trains and buses and trams? And on the back of them, there was always a pearl of wisdom. And I remember seeing one one day, it said, if you ever feel a long way from God, who moved? God doesn't move, God is constant. But we tend to move away, we tend to tune out. But it's time to tune in to God. It's time for us to get back listening to what God has to say, listening to His Word, listening to His teaching, listening to His instruction, because He is the Good Shepherd and He will not lead us astray. John 10, 27 to 28. We've lost it. There it is. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Perhaps try this. In the morning, say good morning to to the Holy Spirit. When God wakes you up, acknowledge God and keep your mind on Him as a sheep follows the shepherd. God is calling. Perhaps there's people here this morning that you've lost touch with God. Or perhaps you feel that you've tuned out in some way. It's not too late. You can tune into God anytime. He's always there. There's always the opportunity to tune back in. It's as simple as listening. Tune out of things going on around you. Tune in to what the Holy Spirit is saying. And God will bless you, I promise. God will have something for you. Even a small teaching. It might be nothing complex, nothing earth shattering, but it could make a big difference in your life. And God has got something for you. Just tune in to Him. Consciously and deliberately tune in as a spiritual discipline. Just while the musicians play, can we have a song please? Just think about that, maybe pray. And if you'd like someone to pray for you, perhaps just put your hand up and those around you can gather around and pray. God knows what it is that you want to pray for. You don't need to tell anybody, but God knows what it is.